Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We just wanna welcome everybody to our online broadcast and worship experience. We thank God for you showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there will be something that'll be shared with you that'll be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we just wanna say welcome to everybody, all of our online listeners. We just want you to do this. We want you to go ahead and share this message with others, set your watch parties. We want for some of you to go on over, for those that haven't, go to our YouTube channel, click subscribe, click the notifications button so that you can be notified whenever new content is uploaded um, to our YouTube channel as well. Listen, we want you to go to every social media platform that we have, uh, Instagram, Twitter, or those that are here on Facebook. Listen, go ahead and follow us, like our page. We love you and appreciate you so much. Um, so that you can stay abreast of the things that we're releasing for you guys for your spiritual enrichment and edification. And so we just love and appreciate you guys so much and just thank you for showing up today. And so listen, we've been dealing with the Holy Spirit. We've been dealing with the power of the Spirit of God and just who the Holy Spirit he is and how he functions through us and flows through us and deals with us. And that he wants to use us to bring God glory in the earth. And so last week I dealt with even giving an encouraging word for the women out there and just the power of God that, that abides in you and things that are going to take place. We talked about the power of the spirit of God, not only within, but upon. And so I want to continue today and deal with these benefits of being filled with the Holy Spirit and who he is and how he functions in our lives and things we can begin to expect when we begin to see um, when we just function in life, we need all, we all need help. We all need assistance in life. And we have a very present help called Holy Spirit. He's the one, the third person of the Godhead. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one, the Bible declares. And so we just want to talk and discuss about those things and talk about who he is and how to function in our lives. So, hey, guys, listen, we want to just thank you once again for tuning in. There's some of you that are tuning in. Come on in. Come on in. Go ahead. Grab your pens, your pads, your devices to go ahead and take these notes. We want you to be blessed by this today. So we're going to do this. We're going to begin to pray. And as we pray, I'm expecting for you as well. I'm expecting for something supernatural to take place. I'm expecting for the great and the mighty to take place. Now, all of my spirit of fire folk out there, we want you to log in. Let us know that you're on. Let us know that you're on. Um, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and say, just say good morning, Pastor. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys so much. We just bless you all. And so, listen, I got some of you that I'm, I'm going to be contacting some of you guys soon. I've already, you know, reached out to some of you. Um, but I definitely want to get with you just to touch you, love on you, and just hug you and just let you know how much we love and appreciate you guys so much for hanging in there. Listen, we see now that things have taken a turn, that there are certain restrictions that have been removed and the ability to have more in gathering and more people coming together as one. And so we just thank God for this opportunity that we will be um, setting up a time where we have an in-person service. We will be doing that. We will be doing that soon just to come together and I'll give more instruction as to how we're going to go about doing everything. Um, as we sit down and we've gone over some things and we're looking at some things, how we need to do it. We are believing God for our new facility, a new building. Um, to worship and to fellowship in as well. And in the meantime, we are still here virtually. We're still here praying for you guys, loving on you guys. We want you to know that we're here for you. If you need us, we're here. We're always here for you. And we thank God for you being there. Uh, we've been doing our different discipleship trainings and uh, Bible studies online and virtual and through Zoom sessions and all of that. And so I've been able to touch some of you and just love on you and to see you, to interact with you. Um, but we want to heighten it up. We want to amplify it. And so we want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. We want to be a blessing to those that are current members, partners, and supporters. But we also want to expand our reach, expand our territory. One of the things that the Spirit of God said was this. I want you to build locally, but I also want you to think globally. So not only local building, but global thinking as well. So that we need to go forth in the earth and to teach God's people who they are. And so you are a part of that. You are partners with us. You are partakers of this grace. You are partakers of this assignment and this vision that God has given us to teach people who they are in Christ, to show them their authority, their rights and privileges, 
as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, to raise up individuals, to help change a culture, to ignite a passion and to live a dream out. And so listen, one of the things that we have to understand is that the Holy Spirit will be that very present help that we need to accomplish this task, that God wants us to take over every sphere of influence in the earth. And so Holy Spirit is the one, he's our guide, he's our assistant. He's the one to bring us comfort. He's the one to bring us peace. He's the one to bring us direction and instruction. And so we're going to go through the word of God today. We're going to deal with this today. And so I'm excited about that. So let's have a quick word of prayer and we're going to jump into this. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding. Father, we thank you that we approach your holy written word reverently today. We thank you right now for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that he is the one who abides, lives, and dwells with us on the inside of us, inside of us ready to give us peace, ready to give us wholeness in every area of life. So we just thank you so much. We give you praise so much for it, Father. We give you glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for you are a great God. You are a great God and there is none like unto you. You are the one ready to give us peace. You are the one ready to give us joy. You are the one ready to give us wisdom. And we thank you for it this day. Thank you that every ear is anointed to hear. Thank you that every heart is open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. So we magnify you. We glorify you. We honor you this day for you are a great God. 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 And we thank you so much. We thank you for great peace. We give you praise. We give you glory for it. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. One of the things I want us to begin to do, I want us to open up our Bibles to the book of Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one. Um, um, I'm bringing out my teaching had a little bit more this morning to, to sow some things in you, to, to really prepare you. God wants to do some great things. He wants to, he wants a people that he can show himself strong through. And so now we're going to have to trust the person of the Holy spirit who God has given us to assist us, to help us, to show us things to come, to reveal all truth unto us. Now in the book of Acts chapter one, verse eight, I, I want to read this. He says, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You shall receive power. I like that. But you shall receive power. This word power, and let me stop here, comes from the Greek word dunamis, where we get our word dynamite. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now watch this. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria and unto the, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So now we see one of the benefits or the reasons to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive this power, to receive this ability, to receive another word is anointing. To anoint means to rub on, to smear on, to paint on. In other words, God is putting and painting his power on us. Why? To be a witness unto him both in Jerusalem. Now watch this. He was telling them at that time, that geographic location, but we can liken it to us today, to whatever sphere of influence that you're in, whatever location that you're in, your local, but also a global view, not only immediate, but also extended. So wherever you are, you've been painted with power. You've been endued with power from on high to be a witness to be a witness for him. Now, this is interesting. When we talk about being a witness for Christ, one of these, this definition of witness is, is, is almost like a person, um, you're a demonstrator of God's glory, a demonstrator of his power, 
a demonstrator of his goodness, a demonstrator of his character, a demonstrator of his strength, a demonstrator of his wisdom. Every facet of who God is, even by the person of the Holy Spirit who abides in us, those characteristics are to come forth from us. And we got to now go in and say, okay, God, this is what you want to do. What is it that you want to say to your people? What is it that you want to get across? And he's saying, I want to get across to my people how much they are like me. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I want to show them how much I've created them in my image. I've created them in my likeness and they need to know how to function as kingdom citizens who abide in this earthly realm. We are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of God. We are citizens, ambassadors of Christ who are here on a temporary assignment to get God's will done in the earth. God created us for his glory, folks. And God wants to find people that he can show himself strong through. He wants to show himself strong through us, Spirit of Fire. He wants to show himself strong through us, Body of Christ. Wherever you logging in on, some people are on now, some might log on later, some may listen later. But listen, God wants to demonstrate his power through you. He wants to demonstrate his personhood through you. And we need to get to know who he is to enable, watch this, to enable us to know who we are. It's hard for us to find our identity in Christ if we don't know who Christ is. If we don't know how big and bad he is, how wonderful he is, how compassionate he is, how glorious he is. There is nothing too hard for God. And if there's nothing too hard for God, there is nothing too hard for you and I. So now we got to understand this. He wants us to be a witness. He says unto me, be witnesses unto me. Jesus said, be witnesses unto me. We're to be witnesses for Christ in all that we do. Amen. He says this, and unto the, both in Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And so we need to understand this, that it's impossible to be this level of a witness without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We need to now have Holy Spirit to be upon our lives and to function in us, to walk in us in such a way, in such a way that men cannot deny that God is with us, man. God, listen, God, listen, we, men can't deny that God is with us. So God is saying this. He says, I need you to begin to believe who you are. I need you to begin to believe just how big you are. I need you to believe what I can do through you. I need you to extend your faith to a greater level. I need you to begin to believe bigger than what you've been believing. I need you to see things greater than what you've been seeing. And so God is saying this, I need for you to be compassionate to your fellow man. Now you can be endued with power. You can have the Holy Spirit. You can speak in tongues. But if we don't demonstrate love to our fellow man, Paul said it like this. I don't care if you got the tongues of angels and that you can prophesy and do all of this stuff. He says, it, but if you, if you don't have love, you just a clanging symbol. It's like my dad used to have this statement. It's an old, this old country saying or whatever. He said, you like a dull knife that just ain't cutting, talking loud and saying nothing. It's like, okay, you saying you do all of this shouting and do all this running and do all this dancing. But what about the fruit of God's spirit? We got to we got to walk in and now and we got to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us to now show us how we're not being a good witness. Listen, you not being successful is not a good witness. You walking defeated, you being depressed all the time, you being broke, busted and disgusted. Listen, that's not a good witness to the world, to the earth. Listen, if me, listen, if our lives aren't better because of Christ, why would men want Christ to come into their lives? We should be demonstrators of God's glory. We should be innovators in technology. We should be those in the forefront of society. Why? Because we have the advantage. We have God himself abiding in us by the person of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a person. We've, that, we've already settled that, that he is a person. Jesus said when he, the spirit of truth, will come about in you, he will lead you into all truth. He will teach you all things. He will show you things to come. He's a person. And because he's a person, he has a personality. And we need to know the person of the Holy Spirit, not just know about him, but to know him. That means to communicate with him. That means to talk to him. 
just like I'm talking to you and we have conversation with one another, you can talk to Holy Spirit. You can ask him questions. You can expect to hear from him. He is there to lead God and direct. And he is saying this. There is so much that I want to get across to my people, to the people of God. But they're rejecting my wisdom when I begin to reveal things. He's trying to push. He's trying to prompt. He's trying to lead. He's trying to guide you into that new season, into that new dispensation that you're supposed to walk in. There are seasons and levels to this thing. And God is saying this. I want to amp up your expectation. I want to amp up your your. I want to get you out of your comfort zone to be that witness. And God is saying this. He says, if you will allow me, I will show you great and mighty things to come. If you would just allow me, <laughs> I tell you, he will begin to grant visions and dreams to us, y'all. God wants to do great and mighty things. And today I want to specifically talk about some things that the Holy Spirit will begin to do. See, now I'm, I'm telling you, he, number one, I want to start here that he will comfort us. He will comfort us. He will comfort us, help us, strengthen us and enable us. Comfort, strengthen, help us and enable us. In the book of John 14, verse 16, I want to go there real quick. John 14 and 16, um, and I'll excuse me, normally I had it already up on my thing. Uh, John 14, I said 16. So now it reads like this. It says, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. But then... Verse 17 says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him, not neither knoweth him, but you will know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And so now he's going to bring us comfort. Now to bring comfort, that word actually comfort is translated a helper. So he's going to give us a helper. So the Holy Spirit, you got to get this, y'all. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. He is there to assist us. He is there to give us guidance. He is there also to enable us. To enable you means to cause you to be able to do something that you could not do in your natural ability. Holy Spirit is there to help us with that. He's there to empower us. He's there to strengthen us. When fear hits us to say, no, you can't do that. Holy Spirit said, yes, you can, because you can do all things through Christ. And watch this through Christ and also the ability that was upon Christ to do what he did abides on the inside of you and I. The Holy Spirit dwells in us to enable us to get the job done. You have been created. I have been created with an assignment. And so with that assignment, that calling on our life is a grace, is an anointing that enables us to get the job done. You are graced to do what you have been called and created by God to do. And Holy Spirit is there to help you. He's there to give you wisdom. He's there to strengthen you. Even when in your own ability, you feel like you don't, you can't do it. Even in your own mind, when those starts come to say, you know what? You haven't been educated enough. You haven't been trained enough. You ain't been groomed enough. And then all of a sudden, all of these starts of doubt and unbelief come in to try to stop you from moving into the thing that God has already equipped you to do. And so Satan is trying to talk you out of your destiny and your purpose. And he's depositing things in your mind to shut down your progress so that you won't move forward in that thing. And for some, God is saying the reason why you haven't stepped is because you don't believe you can do it. And God is saying all things are possible to him that believe. He says, I need to work on your believing right now. Your believing needs to be amped up. You need to trust that the Holy Spirit who abides on the inside of you and I can uh, enable us, strengthen us, and comfort us, and, and, and guide us into the place that, hey, all things going to take place. Not just all things are possible, but all things will take place. All things will manifest in the name of Jesus. Okay, Holy Spirit. So that means now I need you to stretch, come out of comfort, come out of complacency, come out of stagnation. Even during this time, this past year or so, there have been some who've been stagnant. They've been complacent. They've gotten comfortable. Some people have gotten comfortable not coming together um, and communing and having fellowship with one another. Some people have gotten comfortable. I mean, it's something as simple as comfortable working at home and not going out that now all of a sudden you're not even used to getting dressed anymore and, and getting yourself together to go out into society. Some people have gotten so complacent 
with some things that God is saying now that this season has taken place and we're now turning into a new season and going into another another season of our lives and a season in this earth. You need to now come out of the lull that you've been in and the fear because men have sown so much fear that now when the tides have turned, you still got to deal with the fear of what the media and society has sown into your hearts and into your mind that God is saying, Holy Spirit, he's going to begin to quicken and bring some things alive back into you again, that there were some people who didn't stop moving. They didn't stop progressing, but there are some people who shut down their lives and God is saying, I need you to pick your life back up again. I need for you to start moving again. I need you to start thinking again. I need you to start dreaming, activating those gifts, talents, and abilities in you to now move forward and to progress in the thing I've called for you to do. So he's there to comfort us, to help us. And then we also notice this number two. I've already read this, but in Acts 1 and 8, he's come to give us power. This power that we have, we cannot neglect the power that we have. This power changes and rearranges things. This power delivers. This power sets free. This power makes whole. You've been empowered to have dominion over what used to have dominion over you. You used to now be bound, but now you're free. And that power that abides in you overrides the outward temptations and things that come to your mind to shut you down and to stop you. You've been given authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing, no thing shall by any means hurt you. You've been granted power. You've been granted power from on high. When the Holy Ghost invaded this atmosphere, he came to dwell into the church of the living God to strengthen us, to enable us. And don't you let anybody talk you out of. Listen, there are people who done gone to seminaries and they've been trained not to believe. And listen, God's saying that the Holy Spirit is there to abide in you. Listen, that wasn't just for the early church. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was not just for those 120 that were in the upper room. The Holy Spirit is here in the earth for the church today, to guide us today, to live in us today. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that caused him to turn water into wine, the same power that caused them to walk on water, the same power that caused lepers to be healed, the same power that caused blind men to see, the same power that caused the lame to walk, Walk. The same power abides on the inside of you and I, and we need to walk in that power. We need to believe in that power. We need to trust in that power, and we'll lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. We'll be like Peter, and we'll walk past folk, and our shadow will heal them. Why? Because of the embodiment of this power that abides in us by the person of the Holy Spirit. If you agree with that, somebody shout power. Type power for me right now. Glory to God. Now, number three, real quick, he's there to intercede for us. He's there to intercede for us in the book of Romans 8, 26 through 28. I love this. I love this. I love this passage of scripture. It says here, it says, so too, this is out of the Amplified version, Romans 8, 26 through 28. He says, so too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weaknesses. For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Holy Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is, because the Holy Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God. We are assured and know God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. So now when we begin to pray in the spirit and we begin to pray in tongues, our heavenly language, what, what is happening is Holy Spirit is praying through us for us according to the will of God the Father, the perfect will of God. 
but we must do the praying. He will do glory to God, the interceding. As we begin to pray in tongues, what is taking place? Holy Spirit is interceding. Now, not only for us, but then he'll use us to intercede for others as well. But this thing I want to talk to you right now is he'll pray for you. He'll pray through you, for you, concerning matters about you, about your life. But now if we don't yield our tongue to begin to speak these things out, that we pray the wisdom of God, it says in 1 Corinthians, in a mystery, we pray things out. We speak things. We speak wisdom. We speak things into existence when we pray in the spirit and the Holy Spirit who abides, watch this, who knows everything there is to know about God, abides in our born again human spirit, who knows everything there is to know about us. And he'll pray for things that we don't know how to articulate in our prayer, in our normal prayer life, in our normal language. But he will pray through us, for us concerning those things. So if you're ever stuck in a situation, you can say, okay, Holy Spirit, I don't know what I, how I need to talk about this situation here now, but I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I need you to help me with my marriage. I need you to help me with my children. I need you to help me with my ministry, my business. I need you to help me on the job. I need you to help me in life. There is wisdom available and I need for you to strengthen me. I need you to enable me. I need you to comfort her to help me in this situation. So now by faith, according to the word of God, you will pray through me for me. You will intercede on my behalf before God concerning all matters of my life. So now by faith, I release this in tongues now. Le bre ma shukumbre, la ramando kurama sekene, le rubo shekane de de besete, lo romo. Now, how long do I stay there? How long do I pray like that until you get a note of victory? What does that feel like? It's almost like a calm, a peace, that velvety like feeling. You feel like, okay, I got everything out. Whatever it is that I needed to pray, Holy Spirit prayed it through me just then and there. So now, watch this. Even though Paul says my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful, I still know by the word of God, when I pray in the spirit, these things are taken care of. Then it goes down to verse 28. We are sure that we know that all things are working together for our good. All things are working together. But watch this. The all things working together for our good is tied in two verses 26 and 27. That when we begin to pray, Holy Spirit will pray through us according to the will of God. And we know according to that, that situation is taken care of. And even though our head might be tripping, our hearts know it's all good. But now our heads now can now be settled in the fact that Holy Spirit is taking care of this thing. Whatever he needs to reveal to me at that time to get anything done, he'll reveal what he needs to reveal to me to get done. He'll handle whatever needs to be handled on his end. And I'll do my part. If he reveals to me to do something, I'll do it. So now we know that these things will work together. Number four, he'll guide us into all truth. It says in John 16 and 13, he's going to lead us. He's going to guide us into, he, I like that. He leads and guides us into all truth. He will lead and guide you. It says here, verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, they calls him the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of truth. So when he speaks, it's truth. Just like when Satan speaks, it's a lie. When the Holy Spirit speaks his truth, he guides us. He leads us. Watch this. He speaks. Watch this. How be when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will, he will guide. He will guide you into all truth. He'll guide you into all truth. He'll guide you. And a, another definition means he'll advise you. He will show you the truth. He will lead you to things that reveal the truth to you, or he will inwardly reveal things to you and then give you even outward confirmation of those things. When we read the scripture, he breathes on this. He illuminates it to our minds. He shows us things in the word of God, but we need to trust that he will lead God and direct us. He says, watch this. He will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. This is the same thing Jesus said. Jesus said, I don't say anything unless the father commands me to say it. Holy Spirit is the same way. What, this is why when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, it's God speaking to us. 
by the person of the Holy Spirit. He abides in us. He lives in us. He says this, I must speak. What I'm speaking, the Father is speaking. The Father has authorized Holy Spirit to speak these things to us. And so now, as we begin to hear, okay, God, what is it that you're saying to me? The Holy Spirit begins to whisper things into your spirit. He begins to illuminate things to your mind. And folks, you need to become confident in what you've been hearing from God. I hear that right now. I believe I'm supposed to say that right now. You need to be confident in what God has been speaking. The reason why you now kind of all discombobulated, you saying, I don't know what to do is because you rejected the wisdom that God has already revealed to you. If you just go back to what he already said, your answer is already there. That, see the word, listen, one word from God will cause your life to be totally transformed and changed. And oh, when, let me say it like this too. And sometimes obedience to that one word from God, that sometimes God can speak things, but if we don't believe it, receive it, and act on it, we won't see the fruit of it. God can tell you by his spirit, it can be through another individual that maybe confirms what God is already saying to you, that listen, this is the way you need to go. You believed it at that moment, but then what happens is you allow doubt and unbelief to creep in to get you off of what God said, and then you come back to God again. God, what you say? What you want to say to me? Well, how am I supposed to handle this? God said, I already answered that for you. I already told you what to do. I'm not going to tell you anything different. Go back and do the last thing I told you to do. What is it that God is telling you to do? Be consistent in it. Listen, you got to be consistent. You see, through faith and patience, we inherit the promise. So you got to believe you received that word, understand that it's from God, but now you have to consistently walk it out to now walk in the full revelation of that thing. Sometimes the truth that's illuminated to us comes through us walking a thing out over a period of time where we see the fullness of it. We see the full manifestation of it. We get a better comprehension or understanding of why we even went that way. Why did God lead us this way? Why did the Holy Spirit lead me to go through this route that I had to take? I didn't want to take that route, but you didn't realize you begin to pick up things along the way. You begin to grow along the way. It matured you. It strengthened you. You were strengthened through adversity. You thought you couldn't handle certain situations, but now all of a sudden, Holy Spirit showed you, listen, you stronger than you think. Stop crumbling under pressure. Listen, that pressure has come so that now you got something to work out on. So now you resist it in the name of Jesus and you open up your mouth and you begin to speak. You open up your mouth and you begin to praise. You open up your mouth and you begin to declare and decree what thus saith the Lord and it shall come to pass. And in that process, your strength is being renewed. You becoming stronger. You becoming greater. And when you come out of this thing, you're going to look back and see just how much you've grown, just how much God has increased you. And to know the fact that, you know what? I wouldn't have chosen this way, God, but you know all things. You do all things well. And now, Lord, I'm going to take this opportunity to grow in the midst of adversity. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. Watch this. Remember in the book of Luke chapter four, right after Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan, the Bible says this, that the spirit of God led him into the wilderness. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness situation to be tempted 40 days and 40 nights. And after Jesus successfully overcame the temptations in that wilderness, the Bible then says he came out in the power of the spirit. He was led in by the spirit and he came out in the power of the spirit. He was led in that thing by the spirit. And as a result, he came out in the power of the spirit. You've been going through your wilderness situation long enough and God saying it is graduation time and watch this. Your graduation will be based on your level of resistance to the temptations that you have gone through in that wilderness season that it's been designed not to break you, but to grow you and to increase you. What Satan meant for your demise, God is going to turn it around for your good. Glory to God. And you're going to begin to grow in this thing and no longer are you going to be a whippy Christian. No longer 
will you be a weak backbone Christian? No longer will you walk in fear. No longer will you walk with your head held, head held low. You better raise up your head because watch this, your redemption draw up now. You are seated together with Christ in heavenly places and then through Christ Jesus. Listen, baby, you better know who you are and you better begin to declare and to decree and you need to begin to rejoice that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, that shouting ground right there, that shouting ground right there, that the greater one abides on the inside of us. Watch this. I love, I like that he leads and I can, I can unpack that a little bit more, but watch this. Number five, he'll show us things to come. He'll also show us things to come. It says here in the same verse, he'll show us things to come. He's showing us things. The Holy Spirit showed me years ago. He says, I want you to be completely digital while we were having services in a school. I heard it then. I heard it then, not realizing what we were about to come into, a virtual setting. So we needed to structure and to be ready. See, and that's the thing. When he shows you things to come, he's trying to prepare you for what's about to hit. There are things that are about to hit. There are things, there are shifts that have already taken. And you need to be ready to handle, but you got to be in tune with him. You got to listen to him. You got to spend time in prayer. You got to spend time in quiet in quiet times with God and praying and praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit will stir your spirit man up. It'll get you to the place of being sensitive to hear God's voice as he begins to speak. But we got to spend that time. We got to spend that time and then keep a pen and pad ready because God will give you instruction. But God is not obligated to repeat himself. Now, he will at times. He'll reveal things to you, but you got to catch some of that stuff. And you can ask him, can you reveal that to me again? Can you show me that thing again, Holy Spirit? What was that thing that you mentioned to me before? I missed it. I forgot it because it was good when I got it, but I forgot to capture it. And be ready to capture wisdom. That's a good word right there for you. Be ready to capture wisdom when it's released to you. Capture that wisdom from God. Because as you're praying in the Holy Spirit, when I keep saying God, he'll speak to you. And he'll speak to you by the Holy Spirit. And when Holy Spirit begins, see, this is another thing. You got to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. You got to acknowledge him as a person. You got to acknowledge him. See, I used to spend time as a, as a teenager. When my pastor began to teach on I can have this relationship with God and I can ask him to show me things and to do this stuff, I took it at his word. I took the pastor at his word and I took God at his word. I said, okay, this is what pastor taught us, Lord, based off your word. And I, I just went to God boldly as a teenager coming out of high school, and this was before high school, and I just heard this stuff. And I'm like, okay, I want to experience you, God. Holy Spirit, I want to get to know you. And then, don't you know, I remember, it was after my senior year of high school, when I graduated high school, that summer was a time where my relationship with God by the person of the Holy Spirit began to take off. That I was seeking God like never before. Praying, try, I mean, hearing words, messages, and things of that nature, feeding on the Word of God. And then all of a sudden, as a young adult, I begin to just grow in the things of God, grow in the spirit, the ways of the spirit, how the Holy Spirit functions, how he flows, how he moves. We need to learn those things, too. We need to talk about some of these things. How does he function? How does he flow? How do you know when it's the Holy Spirit? And so many times people have rejected Holy Spirit because of the demonstrations that they've seen others. Because when he's come upon different people at different times, based off of their expression of their encounter with the Holy Spirit, it turns some of us off. You know, I remember coming up, I, and I'm not speaking against any denomination, but the church, that the, the denomination I came out of before coming to non-denominational circles, that whenever you saw somebody, you know, and it was most times it was a woman that we would see and they would get to screaming and flailing and people got to come around them and hold them down because they just, ah, ah, and that's, and that was the Holy Ghost to us. And that's always, look, she got the Holy Ghost and like, like phrases like she caught the Holy Ghost, you know, or, you know, you hear these things and sometimes we got to talk about that stuff. And when you come up in certain cultures, your mind is already kind of fixed on, wait a minute, if that's the Holy Ghost, I don't know if I want them. Because of the demonstrations that we see others do, based off of their personal encounter and experience. I'm not knocking your personal encounter, but now let's see what the Bible shows, how these manifestations work. Let's see examples of the Holy Spirit manifesting himself. Let's see how things function and flow. And so even during this time of us coming up to Pentecost, where we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about how he functions and flows. 
We need to know the ways of the spirit. How does he manifest? There are different manifestations. There are different gifts. There are different things. And so even as the Holy Spirit begins to manifest, he'll manifest in different ways. See, a lot of times, don't let somebody else's unbelief stop you from experiencing the fullness of who God is. Because they don't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Because they don't experience it doesn't mean it's not of God. But you got to know how to now decipher certain things. Jesus did stuff like he spit, made clay of the spittle and put it on a person's eyes and they got healed. But did, Jesus didn't do that all the time. Some people, he just laid hands on them. Some people, he just spoke the word to and they were healed. He, he was different ways or manifesting the same spirit, anointing and power. But there were still different ways in which the power of God manifested or the Holy Spirit coming up upon people manifested. Some people take off running. Some people dance. Some people shout and scream. Some people do, you know, then you got people who dance. Some people of certain ethnicities, they just get to flailing with no rhythm. Then you come in some most African-American churches, depending on the type of, of um, denominational culture, they pick them up and put them down. And they write on rhythm, write on beat. And it looks like a choreographed dance. And then somebody said, well, that's choreographed, so that's the flesh. And so because we just go for it, that's just the spirit. Well, no, you can be in the flesh just as much off of rhythm as you are in rhythm. And so we just look at things like this and we got to deal with these things. And so sometimes people say, well, if that's you, that's cool. But I don't do that. I don't do all of that stuff. He doesn't work with me like that. And so that's cool. But now we got to get to the point we stop um, not dumbing down, demeaning somebody else's expression or experience with the Holy Spirit over ours. And so we need to begin to talk about some of this stuff. And that's why I want to deal with these things. As he begins to manifest, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and be intelligent. You can be, I mean, there are people who are, now, 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 now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start dealing with some of these things. And so because I've been there, I've been there when the Spirit of God came upon me and I began to shout and begin to leap and begin to rejoice. And I'm like, Lord, what am I doing? And it wasn't that he was making me do it. I yielded myself to him, but then great freedom and liberty came. For me, it was prophesied to me at the age of 16. I think I was, yeah, I was a junior in high school. And this youth pastor prophesied over all the grandchildren in our family. And when he got to me, one of the things was there's gonna be, I'm gonna bring a great freedom in worshiping me, a great freedom in living my life through you. And so what happened was at that point in my life, I was afraid to even lift up my hands, even in, in church service. I, while praise and worship was going on, I look around at people, I was embarrassed to lift my hands. I mean, just something that simple. But when God delivered me, I remember the Sunday, I remember the clothes I was wearing. I was wearing this green suit. I bought it from this, this local, it was, it was sharp though, I was sharp. Had the matching tie, had the, the, it was a tie of green with burgundy in it, had some burgundy shoes on. Now, it was shop back then, it was shop back then. Y'all might look at me crazy now if I was to wear it. But listen, I was clean then. But all of a sudden, this the choir was singing. And it was a song, I Can Go to God in Prayer. And it got, it hit this point where they said he can work it out. And the choir started saying, yes, he can, yes, he can, yes, he can, oh, yes, he can. Man, all of a sudden, the anointing of God hit me. And I got to jumping in the middle of the aisle and I got to praising God. And in my mind, I was like, what are you doing? Mike, what are you doing? But God brought a great freedom. He honored that prophetic word that he spoke to me. And that was a great freedom. I didn't care who was watching me. I didn't care who was looking at me. I was just rejoicing before God. And from that day forward, I was never ashamed again to express my gratitude, to express my praise, to express God's goodness. So there are times when the Holy Spirit comes upon me physically, I'll begin to cry because I'm thinking how good God is, but also the power that comes upon my physical body begins to cause a reaction. Listen, some people, when the Spirit of God comes upon them, some people say, why people fall under the power of God? That stuff fake. No, when true power comes in contact, supernatural power comes in contact with physical flesh or body, something has to give. That this thing is, is real. That's why when I pray for people, I don't try to push them down. If they fall under the power, cool. If they don't, listen, they still can receive what they need to receive without falling. But it's something about the yielding to the Holy Spirit. The
that will cause things. There are people who say, you know what? I ain't doing all of that. And so they reject the Holy Ghost. It's not about falling. It's not about shouting. It's about yielding and receiving to the Holy Spirit, what he wants to do in your life, what he wants to release. He wants to bring freedom. He wants to bring healing. He's not trying to break your will, so to speak, but he wants your will to be submitted unto him. And so now if you just begin to submit and begin to yield, you'll begin to experience some greater manifestations of glory, power and anointing that you never thought you would. And so I'm encouraging you today. Listen, we need to get to know the person of the Holy Spirit, who he is, how he functions, how he came upon Elijah and Elijah outran the king to the entrance of Jezreel. And some of y'all talk about folk who run in church service. Listen, it's the same hand that came upon him, Elijah, to run. There's the same anointing that came upon me when I begin to run in buildings and run in services. I didn't run every service, but if I felt the anointing come upon me, that was my expression because the power was so strong that it had to express. I had to express what was going on in me. Whether it's through shouting, whether it's through running, whether it's through the lifting up of my hands, whether it's through glory to God shouting to the top of my lungs at that moment. Listen, the spirit, of, yeah, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So we don't have to do that. But I yielded myself. But what it did for me was it brought great freedom and liberation to express my my relationship with God, to express my gratitude, my thanks, my thankfulness, all of these things, and to also yield to the power and the potential that it brings and to all the manifestations that it can bring. And so now all I'm saying is this, when you begin to know the Holy Spirit, he'll show you, he'll guide you, he'll lead you, he'll give, like some of y'all, he might've led you to this broadcast to begin to learn some of these things. You've been thinking about this stuff, you've been praying about it. And so he's been leading and guiding you into all truth. He might lead you to hear somebody that would reveal the truth to you, or he might reveal it directly to you. But the good thing is he's always going to lead you and guide you into the truth. If you seek in the truth and that you yield yourself to what he wants to say to you and he'll begin to manifest. Listen, he, listen, oh man, I'm almost out. Man, I didn't realize the time is going right this quick. I'm going to have to grade it. I'm going to have to pick this up next week. And this showing you things to come. I'm going to read this to you real quick and I'm going to get it. And I'm going to stop here. He'll grant you visions. God started dealing with me about this visions and dreams, prophecy, visions and dreams. He says he'll show you what's going to happen, not just in world events, but in your personal life as well. He'll show you things to come. He'll reveal things. I remember the Holy Spirit revealing to me around the time I knew I was, I was going to end up getting married or moving out of my parents home at the age that I was at that time. And I remember talking to my mom about it. And she even told one of my aunts, and my aunt was like, yep, it's, it's about that time. It's about that time. Cause God was showing me things, showing me some things. He was revealing some stuff in order for me to start preparing for it. And then too, he'll prepare some, cause there's some people who don't adapt to change well. So he'll start showing you some stuff to get you in the, the mindset of it. So that when it's time for you to move, you don't hold back any longer because he knows how you think and how you feel. And so God might be showing you some stuff now. It may not be right now the time, but God will reveal to you when it's time, okay? He'll show you things to come. He wants to show you your future. He wants to let you know at least certain things you need to start, watch this, he'll show you things to come so you'll know the right direction you need to start going into. So it is very important to hear from him. In the book of Acts 2 and 17, it says this, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. To prophesy means, and I'm going to just by definition means to foretell events. It means to speak under divine inspiration especially pertaining to the kingdom of God to declare things that can only be known by divine revelation. It, it can only be known if God reveals it. There are certain things that in their prophecy comes for edification, exhortation and comfort. The Bible says, and so when prophetic words come forth, now I'm gonna have to start when I start dealing with the gifts of the spirit, 
that we got to know the difference between prophesying and now the word of wisdom, a word of knowledge and manifestation. Because some people mix the two. They'll mix the three or whatever. So a person is really functioning under one gift, but then they think that they're prophesying just because they are speaking about certain things. Oh, this person prophesied to me. It wasn't necessarily prophesying to you. It was just that this particular gift was in manifestation. And that's how they knew certain events, certain things that were taking place. And we'll get into all of that later on. But then also visions and dreams, visions and dreams. You're going to start seeing more visions and dreams than ever before. That God will speak to you. Sometimes God speaks to people in a dream state because they're so cluttered while they awake. That he gets you to a point where he can begin to talk to you and that you can receive from him. Now watch this visions and dreams seeing into the spirit realm and also the eyes of your understanding opening greater than ever before. God, see the eyes in the book of Ephesians talks about the eyes of our understanding that your eyes, spiritual eyes will be open. The eyes of your comprehension and understanding will be open and enlightened. You will begin to see things greater to know and understand and comprehend things better than you ever have before. Sometimes people are at a state now that like somebody can be telling you something over and over again for years, but then all of a sudden it just clicks. It's like the aha moment that you're going to have greater understanding. And so one of the things I recommend for you is to begin to pray this prayer out of Ephesians chapter one, Ephesians chapter one, verses 16 through 23. When Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, but you can pray that for yourself. That father, I thank you that the eyes of my understanding are being enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards me who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ, when you raise him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, not only in this world, um, but also in that which is to come. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And all things have you put under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. See, then I go into Ephesians 2 and 1. And us have you quickened and made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. And you've raised us up together. Verse 6, the Father has seated us beside Christ. We're seated together with Christ in heavenly places. And because we're seated with Christ in heavenly places, we're far above all principality and powers. And everything that tries to come against us is under our feet because it's under his feet. Father, I thank you that my eyes are open to see who I am in you. Thank you that my eyes are open to see the manifestation, your manifested goodness in my life. My eyes are open to see this. And God is saying it's time to move. I, I keep hearing move swiftly now. It's time to manifest. Break out of the mold. Break out of your comfort zones. It's time for you to experience divine manifestations of my power and of my goodness. There have been blessings that have been damned up for years. And God is saying this is your release time. That there should be more that begins to happen in these next six months than happened in the last six years. That there will be greater manifestations and glory of my power like you have never seen before. He says if you can believe it and receive it, you'll begin to experience it that there will be an unveiling and an unraveling of things in these days to come. And before the end of this year is out, you will begin to see divine interventions, divine manifestations like you've never seen before. Thus saith the Lord, and you got to be ready for it. So don't worry like the world worries. Don't fret like they fret because you hear of wars and rumors of wars. He said, for the end is not yet, but it is soon to come. And this is the time when my church needs to accelerate like never before, to come up out of the ashes like never before, to be placed in positions of authority, of prominence and honor like never before. And now we're going to go out with a bang on this thing. When Jesus comes back for us, we will be ruling and reigning like never before. There are cities ready to be built. There are nations yet to be established, says the Spirit of God, because my power is going forth in the earth and my creative ability like you have never seen before. Oh, it's almost like if you see what I see now, it's like oh, our bodies are containers of the glory of God. Our spirits are containers. That's why when the power of God manifests at a high level, our body succumb to it. Our spirit can handle it, but our flesh in connection with the, the physical power of God, the manifested presence and power, it gives way. This is why our physical bodies need to be strong and healthy 
to e be even able to withstand certain things, the power manifesting. This is why we need to be healthy for the anointing sake as well. Not just to look good and fit into an outfit well. All of that is good and fine. But to be able to handle the assignment for longevity, health, excellence, and that we're fit to fight the good fight of faith. My pastor has been saying the fit to fight, so I'm taking it on myself. We fit to fight, Spirit of Fire. We are fit to fight, not only physically, but also spiritually and mentally. We fight the good fight of faith. So I want you to keep that, that adage in you. Fit to fight. I'm fit to fight. I'm fit to fight. Every day I get up and pray, I'm doing my reps in the spirit. I'm fit to fight. I get up, do my sit-ups, do my push-ups, do my exercises, my running, my jogging, but I'm fit to fight. I declare and decree things in the atmosphere, and it takes care of spiritual wickedness in high and heavenly places and render them harmless and ineffective against me. I'm fit to fight. And so now you got to understand this, that the glory of God by the person of the Holy Spirit will begin to manifest at an accelerated rate. And we're going to see it manifested. Praise God. I'm done. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor for this word. We thank you right now that we are fit to fight. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, that, we, that he lead guides and direct, uh, directs us, that we submit ourselves unto him. We submit ourselves unto him. We submit ourselves unto him. And that we see greater glory manifesting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, for those who are here who never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you, if you can't give me a little music here, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You've never confessed him as your Lord. The Bible says if you confess him with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Speaking of Jesus. If you've never done that, I want you to do it right now. I want you to have a, there, listen, there is a no soul salvation. There is a literal heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And so I just want you to say this prayer with me, this simple prayer with me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, so thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. There may be there, those of you out there that you accepted Jesus, but you never received the baptism with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And now watch this. This is something, there is no distance in the Spirit, right in your home, right there. The Bible says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Number one, you understand you have a desire to receive Holy Spirit to abide in you and to live in the, and to dwell in you that God will oblige. He will fill you with his spirit. Your job is to believe that you receive him the minute we pray. And when we pray, and I want you to repeat a prayer after me, the moment I say amen, the Bible declares this, that as they begin, they were filled with the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts chapter two, and the people began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. The people did the talking, the Holy Spirit began to assist them to give them utterance what to say and how to say. And so it's a heavenly language, our prayer language, where we can talk directly to God. Satan has no clue what's being said when this goes on. Now watch this. But we have to yield our tongues and begin to speak. Now I don't want you to say anything in English in your own language, but don't say hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, all that stuff is good to say. But at this moment, you're going to begin to open up your mouth, begin to speak, and the Holy Spirit will assist you. Now watch this. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you. And some of, some of you, is like, it's like practicing it. Just like even if you learn a new language in the natural, sometimes you got to practice it over and over again. You become more proficient in it. Some people, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, I mean, it flows out. For some, it starts out slow, then it builds. The more that you pray, then the more articulate you become in it. You know, sometimes some people just start out, la 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 no 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 la 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 la. But then some compre fras de cando, compre me da la mando, compre de kinde, la romo socondo. It sounds more like a language, like I'm having a conversation. But I didn't start out like that. But when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I mean the power of God flooded. <clears throat> now watch this. Everybody's experience is different. 
So we're not going to demean that, but we're going to do this. We're going to believe God together. Now watch this. I want you to begin to pray. Just while you're right there by yourself. Now, if you're driving, you need to pull over, pull over. And then get in a nice parking spot of space where you can just focus on God. Because I want you to pray. Wherever you are, I want you to lift up your hand. And I want you to close your eyes. Get all distractions out of the way. I know the kids might be around your things, whatever. But listen, right now, God wants to fill you with his power. Holy Spirit wants to come and abide and live and dwell in you. To give you this power to live an overcoming and victorious life. Now say this, mm. Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. By faith, I receive you now. I now have the ability. Come on. Say, I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. Now, by faith. I speak now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, come on. Let's begin to pray together. Just begin. Yep. Some of you is like, yep, that's it. That's it. Some of you, yeah, 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 that's it. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Ya bramando kumbre vera bashto kumbre vrasi kanda kumbre vresi teke. Lambre mama no kumbre baba site. Ye robo shoto kumbre mama. Now watch this. Now watch this. Stop. Now calm down. Now stop. 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 Watch this. Let's start praying again. Open up your mouth. Come on. Let's do it again. Le kumbra vresi de kumbre. Come on. Yup. You can do it again. See. Mm-hmm. It says. Watch this. It says you will. Ya bromo. You have control over this. The Holy Spirit won't make you pray, but you pray and he assists. He gives utterance. Now watch this, see? Now I wanted to, now, okay, okay, you, you can stop now. Praise God, I'm excited with you. Now listen, I'm excited with you now. You got filled with the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. You can pray like this every day as much as you want. I say the more the better. The more you pray, the stronger you become. The Holy Spirit will edify you. He'll build you up. He'll charge you up, it says in Jude 20. He'll charge you up like a battery, it says in one translation. I think it's Moffat's translation. He'll charge you up, your spirit man, like a battery, just like you plug your phone in. That if your phone, listen, we watch, we watch our battery life on our phones to see, okay, how much power, how much juice do I have left? We need to do the same thing spiritually. What kind of juice am I working with? You can tell when your levels are low. That's when you're more susceptible to depressions and fears and anxieties and worries. And you can, you can sense it's like a lull, it's like a dullness. But you can stay charged up. And get in your, your prayer closet. What, what do I mean by that? Your private place of prayer. Where it's just you and God. It can be in your car. Some people go in a literal closet. Some people create a room in their homes. Wherever it is, wherever you are, God is. And you just begin to pray. And every day, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you can pray as long as you want and you begin to build yourself up. Now watch this, what will begin to happen is you begin to have a greater awareness of Holy Spirit, who he is, how he functions, how he flows. You'll begin to start hearing from him greater. There'll be things that pop up in you and we'll say stuff like something told me. You gotta be mindful of those moments because he's talking to you. He's sharing things with you. Like, don't go there just yet. Wait 10 minutes. Drink more water. You need to start eating better. You need to start exercising. It's vacation time. Take some time off, get away, de-stress. He'll start sharing things about your life. You need to start preparing. It's time for you to go back to school. You need to start getting this ready. Go meet with this person. He'll start sharing things with you to guide you in your life on a daily basis. Praise God. Last invitation for those that don't have a church home and you want to connect with us. Listen, we welcome you with open arms. Let us love on you. If that's you and God is leading you and guiding you, directing you to become a part of this work, listen, just send us a message. Let us know, hey, I want to connect. Listen, everybody needs a pastor. Everybody needs someone to, to feed you and to watch over you. 
listen, it's the will of God, it's the order of God. He's given the fivefold ministry gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Pastors are shepherds, under shepherds, Jesus being the chief shepherd. And to help watch over people's souls, to feed you the word of God, to pray for you, to watch over you, to help lead, to provide vision for the ministry as a whole, to give you a, a connection, fellowship, if that's you and you desire to connect, just send us a message. Let us know, hey, I want to connect. What do I need to do? We'll have somebody reach out to you to show you what you need to do, how to obtain and to maintain, whether you want to get born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, you want somebody to pray with you, reach out to us. Listen, we got our prayer. Listen, we got our intercessors praying every, I'm, I'm literally meaning every single day. We have prayer on Mondays through Fridays, 7 a.m. to 7.15, Saturdays, 9 to 9.30 a.m., Sunday right before service. 10 to 10 30 a.m pray now i want to encourage even our spirit of fire people our family listen get on those calls man come on pray with us it helps you when you're praying for the vision it helps you stay connected it's a way to stay connected to keep your heart connected with so much going on and so many voices out there and we're hearing this person and that person that we have to be intentional about focusing and coming together as a unit so that's so important. And I encourage you to do that. Well, folks, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. There's some information coming up on your screens that we call it opportunity for prosperity time. The Bible declares in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you again, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, that God will cause men to give unto your bosom. In 1 Corinthians 9, starting verses 6 through 8, it talks about if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly, sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Then it says this, God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a quick prompt to, to do it giver whose heart is in their giving. And so when your heart is in your giving, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have an all sufficiency and all things do abound to every good work. And so listen, as this opportunity arises that we're sowing into the kingdom of God, getting this message out to people, ministering to the lives of people, we want to make sure that you're a part of this, that you're a partake of this same grace, this same anointing that comes, that's upon our lives, comes upon you. Listen, we got to take this thing seriously, folks, that when we begin to sow, expect harvest in your life. Expect to see the goodness of God manifesting in your life in the land of the living, not in the sweet by and by, but here and now. We want to see God's goodness manifest. So we're praying for you that your seed sown will begin to produce hundredfold harvest in return. So whatever, as you sow, sow in faith, sow in love, sow with expectation and gladness. So the information is coming up as to how you can sow. And so as you give, we're in agreement with you. Our family here is in agreement with you. The ministry is in agreement with you so for that, inf that increase to come upon your life. Praise God. Hey, y'all. Well, out of time, but certainly not out of message. Whew. I enjoyed just loving on you guys today, ministering to you. And to know that, listen, the best is yet to come. May God's grace be upon you. May heaven shine on you. May the angels of God surround you, be encamped around about you at all times to protect you and to keep you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Listen, amen and amen. Well, y'all, I'm out of here today. Where we here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship are changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. God bless you all, and I'll see you next time. Peace.